Hey, can you hear me? Okay. Oh, hi, how are you? I'm good. Um, I'm still dressed from church this morning. Are you? I mean, I haven't even had a second to take my, literally, like, I haven't even taken my clothes off. Which, I mean, I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> you look so pretty. <laughs> oh, thanks. Um, this is going on 12-hour makeup here. Hey, um, I just saw you posted <clears throat> your children's organization clothing for the week. Did you get that at Ikea? Yeah, and I just printed it off. I mean, I made the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, how did you recording. stick it on? Let me, let me stop this recording. Started. Okay, I just hit record. Hey, everybody. I'm going to mute um, everyone. I don't know if I can figure out how to mute everybody. Um, okay, I just muted myself. If y'all can mute yourself. I was trying to mute, mute everyone, but... Um, let me see if I can, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, manage participants. Uh, oh, okay. I'm going to mute you guys. Doing that real quick. All right. So um, thanks for hopping on tonight. I know it's kind of crazy with the beginning of school. I kind of rushed to get my kids down. Chris has got her first day of school tomorrow as a teacher. Um, and so we are on Kelly Wenzel's um, Zoom call, and it actually cuts us off at uh, 40 minutes. So um, I'm going to kind of, you know, rush through this and I hope that you guys will have some time to answer some questions. Um, so with this week, we're talking about sponsoring and that was kind of our goal, but I posted on the um, race to star page that several of my, the girls on my team have had questions lately about hostess coaching. So I was going to briefly, if we have time, um, kind of chat about that as well. Um, but first, um, I wanted to kind of address the whole sponsoring thing. So yay to Kim for um, reaching out and sponsoring this week. I'm super excited. You're one step ahead, and hopefully you can share some tips with us, too, that worked for you. But um, the deal with promoting to star, and, um, and this is true for any promotion level that you're going for, but you cannot get to star just solely based on your personal sales. You can't, you know crush it every month in sales and, and hit star. That's not what being a leader in Stella and Dot is about. It is about sharing the opportunity. So when you're talking about sponsoring, I kind of want to talk about three things with sponsoring. Why, how, and who. So the first thing we're going to talk about is why. Um, why would you want to promote? Uh, or why would you want to sponsor? Well, first of all, because you want to promote. That's what I was trying to say. Why do you want to sponsor? Because you want to promote. Um, but also because sponsoring is contagious. I will tell you the month, the months that I, as a leader, am actively sponsoring on my team, it just promotes sponsoring among the girls that are currently on my team. And the reason it does is because I'm able to share with them and with you guys, if you're on my team, and, um, okay, what is happening? Can you guys still see me? <laughs> I think this is, um, okay. Y'all can still hear me and see me? If you want to keep this meeting open, please assign another host before you. Oh, it's because I'm on. Okay, wait. If you want to end, keep this meeting open, please assign another host. Hold on. Um, can I reassign Kelly Wenzel? Kelly, I don't know what's happening. Oh my gosh. This is like happening. Enter a new name here. Hey, Kelly, are you here? Can y'all still hear me? Yes, okay. I think Kelly, I'm on her thing and then she logged in, so maybe she'll have to call from like Brent's phone or something. Okay, so um, your why. I think first of all, because it's contagious. I think any action that you're doing, the girls that are currently on your team, when you are authentic and you're sharing with them, um, <laughs> now Kelly's texting me. She's like, what is your login? Because I can't log in um, because you are logged in. Um, I asked, let me throw it, hold on. Okay, um, let me see if that works for Kelly to log in. She's going to log in as me. Um, and so it, it, I'm sorry about this, you guys, kind of crazy when I'm using her account and she's trying to hop on too. 
So first of all, it's contagious. Second of all, it builds excitement from your team. So um, you're excited for one another, you kind of feel like you're in the trenches together, but it also personally challenges you. And I think anytime um, as a leader that you're getting kind of stagnant in your business, it's always great to challenge yourself and then share those challenges with your team. That's what I do as a leader with my team. And, um, and so that is one of the great things about promoting. Um, but it also, um, it also broadens your revenue stream. And that's one of the greatest things too, is you want to sponsor because it is money that's being earned without you being out and selling. And that's the, one of the greatest things about being st a star is because the, um, the revenue that's coming in versus the effort that's going out, um, are a lot easier to maintain. So star, we kind of call it the sweet spot. So that's why you want to sponsor. But the next question is how do you sponsor? And I kind of think that sponsoring requires three things. It requires practice, right? So it's not something that all, it comes natural to everybody. There are some people that immediately when they sign up, they can share the incentive, they can share the opportunity super easy. The words just roll off their tongue. They find it super easy. But for most stylists, sponsoring is scary. And it feels, um, it feels very awkward and weird. And like you have diarrhea of the mouth and you don't know what to say to people. And so if you don't practice it often, then it feels very awkward. Just like booking a trunk show. Can book, if you take a, a time off of your business and you try to pick it back up and book trunk shows, sometimes that can feel awkward. It's the same thing with, um, with any practice that you're doing in your own personal life. It, it same applies to your business. So if it's not something that you're practicing often, then you can get very discouraged with it and you can, it can feel really awkward. I once heard Mike Loner talk, um, about discouragement and he said that the opposite of discouragement is actually action and actually acting on whatever it is that is discouraging you and whatever it is that is frustrating you. So if you're at a place in your business and you're like, okay, I got my personal business under control. That's what we talked about last week. I'm booking, I've got some trunk shows on the calendar, but I need to be sponsoring. Um, I want to ask you, um, are you practicing talking to people? Um, do you practice in the car on when you have some quiet time, when you're in the shower? Are you having that internal dialogue with yourself? What would I say about this? What would I say to this objection? Um, so first of all, practice. Sponsoring also takes vulnerability. And I know that sounds kind of weird and you're like, why do I need to be vulnerable with someone if I'm trying to sponsor, with them, sponsor them? Because I think that it requires, I think, for you to, to be authentic, and that's my third thing that I think sponsoring requires is authenticity, but I think vulnerability and authenticity kind of go together. Because if you're gonna, if you wanna bring someone along on this journey with you, I think you need to be prepared to tell them why you hopped on board and tell them your why. And sometimes that might be awkward to talk about with someone that maybe you don't know very well or um, someone that you just met at a trunk show but I think that you have to become very comfortable with just like we, we, we always say practice your 30 second commercial. I, I say practice your 30 second why and really honing it in and staying close to that and connected to that. And your why might change often if, if you guys have been a stylist for any more than say three months, three or four months past your first couple of paychecks, your why might have changed. And so I think always having that in the forefront of your mind and being prepared to share that in an authentic way. And that kind of takes me to authenticity. There are tons of videos you can watch. There are tons of words to say that you can read. I can share with you right now on this call what I would say if I was talking to someone. But here's the problem with that. You're not me. We don't have the same why. We don't have the same voice. Um, we don't have the same experiences, the same families, the same upbringing. So it's going to sound different. So I think it's wonderful and it's great to talk to other stylists and listen. I think that's one of the best things to do is to show up to local meetups, to show up to team meetings because you talk to other people. And what you need to do is, is say, you know, when, when Kelly Winslow said this, it really hit home. And, and then when Callie said that, it made sense. And then when Sarah Chauvin said this or um, Liz Nick said that, and you take all of it and you mesh it together, but you make it sound like you. Um, because nobody wants to hop on a team and join something where they feel like they're being sold to or they feel like they're being manipulated into something. But when you can come from a place um, 
of authenticity and of vulnerability when you're sponsoring, I just think that you can get past all of the awkwardness that you think that it might bring. And I always tell people when they're trying to sponsor, I don't even get into the commission structure. I don't get into how many trunk shows you need to book, any of that in my very first sponsoring conversation. Yes, it is obviously going to lead to those conversations and those conversations are awesome, but you're not going to get to those conversations if that person ever wants to talk to you again because they think that you're creepy and you're trying to sign them up for some, you know, pyramid scheme, which Stella Don is not, but you're never going to get to that point if you don't build some kind of relationship with them. So I think that's really important. And I think we get overwhelmed with which I do first and should I talk about all the free products? Should I talk about how much you should make? Should I talk about how many trunk shows you should have? Let's, let's take a look at your calendar and how many, how many nights per week do you need to have? And, and, oh, well, you're going to get the starter kit. You're going to get a 199 and that's going to get you 350 dollars. And they're like, what are you talking about? Like, I just want to know why you enjoy being a stylist. Like, I just want to know what it's like. Like, let me see what it's like. Let me hear from you why you love it. And so my challenge to you is if you don't know why, then you need to really dig deep and think about that and figure out what you love about Stella and Dot and why you keep picking up the phone to book trunk shows. And what is it? Do you, do you love the actual trunk shows? Do you love the freedom, financial freedom that it brings to your family? Do you love the relationships of the girls that you've met on your team? That's what you need to share. That's what you need to share. So, so we talked about the why of sponsoring, the how. Now I want to talk about who. Because sometimes we get, we are like, okay, Callie, I got it. I got my why, I got my how. I have no idea who the heck to be talking to. Um, so what do you think in your mind? And I always have this list running. And some of you on this call um, have actually been on this list before, if I knew you before Stella and I. Um, but I want you to think about who would be on your dream team. This is a list of people who, if you could wave your magic Harry Potter wands over their head, they would say yes immediately to be in a cell and dot stylist because you know they would kill it. You know they would be so awesome. And furthermore, it would just be fun to have them on your team. So who's on your dream team? Who are they? And um, because here's the deal. The people who you typically first promote to star with may not always be the people who are going to continue on your cell and dot, dot, dot journey with you. Because we know that our business there's an ebb and flow to our business. It's a flexible business. And we, we tell ladies that when they sign on and we believe that. So we can't get frustrated when stylists sign on and you're like, okay, I've got my three stylists. I've all, all I need is three. I got my three and they each need to sell 500 together. We need to sell 10,000. I got this. And then the next month they decide they want to flex out because you told them that it's a flexible business and now they flexed out. Um, and guess what? They could do that. So you need to have a backup plan and you need to realize that people are going to flex in and flex out. So when you're thinking about sponsoring and building a team to hit star, you need to think not just three stylists, but six would be fabulous on your team because then you know what, then you're, then there's none of that like pressuring. Then you can be the leader that you want to be, which is the leader that's encouraging and optimistic, not the leader that's stressed out and calling them and going, are you going to sell 500? But are you going to sell 500? What can I give you to sell 500? Here's a rabbit that I'm going to dangle in front of your head. You don't want to do that leader, right? You want them to do this for exactly the reasons that they signed up to do it. And so you are can enable yourself to be the type of leader that you want to be by sponsoring not just three, but six. And that comes from lots of different revenue sources on your team. So one might be, who's your dream team? These are girls who maybe I've told you no once, twice. Y'all, I have a list in the front of my planner. And some of these girls I've asked four or five times and they have said no, but they are not coming off my list because I, they're still, I still think one day they're going to want to do it. Um, I also want you to think about past hostesses. Um, if you're not talking about the stylist opportunity with every single one of your hostess, then we need to edit that situation because you should be. If they are willing to open up their home, invite their friends, take the time to plan things. You need to begin having sponsoring conversations with them, not just at the trunk show, but when you, after you book that trunk show and as you are hostess coaching her. So in some of your, as you drop off her hostess packet, you stick a opportunity brochure in there and you put a sticky note on it that says, Hey, take a peek at this. We'll talk about it at my, at your trunk show um, on Thursday night. 
And then when you follow up with her to make sure she's handed out the invitation, so she's sending out some text messages, be like, hey, did you get that opportunity brochure? I just want to make sure because sometimes it gets overlooked. Um, and she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I got that. Okay, good. We'll talk about that at your trunk show. But like, be planting those seeds. And then at the trunk show, pay attention to how she's behaving during the trunk show. Is she interacting with her guests? Is she putting jewelry on them? Um, and just keep those clues in the back of your mind so that you can talk with her about that later. And it's such an easy conversation to see, say, girl, you were doing this anyways. You were doing half of my job anyways. Your friends would much rather shop with you than with me. Because between you guys, it is way easier to book another trunk show than it is to find a stylist. So if you are concerned, I don't want to sponsor her because um, then it's going to take all my customers. Um, it's not. You can find more customers. We know how to book trunk shows. You're on this call tonight because you know how to book trunk shows. That's not the issue, right? So don't ever think about that. So first of all, your dream team. Second of all, your past hostesses. And Here's my third biggest piece of advice, and I actually just had this conversation with my star stylist, um, Jenny Eisenminger, just the other day, and I mentioned something to her about this girl, and I said, why isn't she a, she a stylist? And she's like, oh, no, no, no. She wouldn't do this. She wouldn't do it because blah, 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 blah. She gave me like four or five excuses, and I said, really? I said, um, do you know for sure? Have you asked her? She kind of giggled, and she said no, and I said, guess what? I'm not trying to be rude here. You know I love you, but you don't get to judge whether or not somebody's going to be good at this or not. You don't know. Um, and I, it's actually sometimes a part of my conversation when I am sponsoring, I'll tell people, I don't know if you're going to be good at this or not. I think you owe it to yourself to try. And um, so I think that the reverse of that is true too, though. Like, I think we talk ourselves out of, you know, uh, approaching, I can come up with that word. <laughs> it's a big word. <laughs> I can uh, approaching. We talk ourselves out of approaching someone because we think, oh, they're a teacher. They're just going back to school. They're not going to have time for this. They're a stay-at-home mom. Let me tell you something. If Sarah Chauvin would have judged me on the type of hostess I was and did not ask me about the hostess opportunity, I would have never become a stylist. You guys, my trunk show, my husband had to buy me up to $500 so that I could get something for free. I had no hostess rewards. I had tons of people come. None of my friends shopped. I had four little kids. All were pulling jewelry off of her tray. My house was a disaster. My trunk show was not successful. It wasn't. But guess what? It was no indication of whether or not I was going to be a good stylist or not. Because my business wasn't built on my friends that came to my trunk show. My business was built on how good am I at marketing myself and marketing the product that I love. And Sarah paid attention to me at the truck show and she paid attention to my reaction and she mentioned it to me. And she said, I know you're going to think I'm crazy. You have four little kids, but um, I mean, they were all home with me, all four of my kids. She could have easily been like, I'm never going to ask her. She's a stay at home mom to four kids. She would never do this. Her truck show was terrible. She's not even a good hostess. I don't want her to be a stylist, but she didn't do that. So in your mind, ask yourself, are you discounting your hostesses? Or are you discounting um, people that shop at your trunk show because you think they would want to do it? I met um, the director of one of a Chase Bank um, who actually kind of is a co-worker with uh, Laura Baker, but kind of in a different division. But she's a kind of a big wig at Chase Bank. And I was like, oh, I mean, she shopped a lot. And I thought, I'm not, I'm not going to ask her. I mean, she has like a serious corporate job. And I thought, um, hi, Kelly Wenzel. Like, why do I think that I should not ask her because she has a corporate job? I mean, maybe she wants something that she enjoys and something fun. So don't discount someone like you don't get to judge either good or bad, whether or not they're going to be a stylist. And if you put that filter on, that might change who your dream list is, right? Who is on your dream list. Um, so here's our challenge this week. All right. Here's your challenge. You are going to contact 10, just 10, former hostesses or you can contact five people on your dream team list okay so 10 former hostesses or five dream team people but this is what also what I want you to do and this is going to be your entry into the giveaway which is going to be to post on the page this week um, while you are doing your reach outs, it doesn't have to be after you finish your 10 or after you finish your five, whatever it is. Um, but I want you to post what was the most difficult thing for you when you're reaching out and sponsoring, because I think it's important for us to share um, 
what scares us and what made us nervous. And it would be great if you did it after you had a phone call or if you're thinking about a certain person. But I want you to share with the other girls in the Race to Star group what makes you nervous about this or what was your biggest struggle in completing this. And that comment, I mean, not that comment, it's not going to be under a picture, but that post is going to be your entry to the giveaway. And the giveaway this week is going to be product. It's going to be the, what is this? Do, we, do I say this? Uh, oh, the Fontaine layering necklace. So Kim, if you're at Hoopla, you have this, but this is the, the black one. It's brand new. So you can see it. Um, it has, it's the hematite and it's the layering necklace. This is, I think, going to be huge in the fall. Um, and it, I, think, I feel like it's one piece that gets overlooked in my display, um, but it's super cute layered with the t-shirt. So I'm going to give this away to one lucky winner. Um, and so as you're reaching out today or this week, I want you to ask yourself, are my actions matching my goal? If my goal is to hit star, are my actions weekly, daily, are they matching the effort that's going to take for me to get to star? Um, does that help you guys? Any questions, comments? I think Kelly Wenzel, you're on the phone. If you want to hop on and say anything, otherwise we can talk about hostess coaching. I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Hi. Sorry. Hi, I, um, hello. So Callie's in my account. So when I logged in, it created some drama. Yeah. And that's why you guys were getting kicked out. So I <laughs> just dialed in on the phone. Um, so I can't see everyone's faces, but happy Sunday. And all of you guys that have little friends heading back to school, happy first day of school tomorrow. I actually take off work from that corporate job and spend the day with my mom friends and we have mimosas and massages and brunch and all that. So I'm actually probably more excited about the first day than the kids are. So um, it's a tradition four years later. Um, and I love that Kelly Smith and I are like kindred spirits. We have kids in the same grade. Um, and, you know, going back to the whole sponsoring thing is like, I'm grateful every day that Sarah Shavian, you know, hounded her and didn't let that rebel pendant or that crazy trunk show. Um, so I think the prejudging is something that's very important. I also think one thing I wanted to share is, you know, um, what you were talking about, Callie, about building and, and from the tenure I have in this business is that, you know, looking back when I first promoted to Star Silas, guys, it was, I was seven or eight months pregnant. I can't even remember. I think seven months pregnant with Hadley. So all of you that every single one of you guys on Facebook friends with can see who she is now. Um, so seven months pregnant with her. Um, I had a corporate job and Brent had um, a few months before lost his job. And so I literally had like talked to Jessica that February and ramped it up. And I promoted February of 10 to star stylist and never not hit it since then. So knock on wood, right? Um, but I will tell you that as I've built my business over the years, the leaders um, and even stylists, it's, it's one of those things that it's so cool to see because who my first leaders were when I promoted to director are no longer in the business. Or one of them has actually signed back up in the past year and is now a hobbyist. Um, but it's, it's really great to see how that evolution happens. And so I think there's something about strength in numbers. I think it goes back to booking, it goes back to sponsoring, um, and it goes back to building your team and, and becoming a star and becoming associate director and senior director and beyond. Is there something about the numbers game? And I think it correlates so much to, to life is the more you put out, the more you're going to get back. Like tonight, putting the kids to bed, we read the energy bus. So that's a big, big, one of my favorite books as an adult, and they have a kid version that's really great. And it's all about that, that positive energy, right? It goes back to like filling those buckets and like what you love your passengers and what you put out is what you're going to get back. And so I think so many times with sponsoring, and like Callie said, we prejudge. And we think all the reasons why people wouldn't want to do it. And I'll share a story is I have a girl who's a really good customer. She lives in California. I went to high school with her. Um, and she, I've thought about her so many times because I would love to keep building out our tribe in California. And she always shops and she's and I just have always thought, you know, she's got so much on her plate. Like she would never, she would never want to do this. She, she's from here. She probably doesn't know anybody in California. And literally a week ago, she reached out to me and she said, Kelly, 
I really think I want to be a stylist, but I don't think I can do what you do. And I, it was so eye-opening to me because I kept, I've always never thought of it from that perspective. If people see me earning trips and, and you know, getting kudos, being top in sales and all of that, that there's so much work that goes into it. And she said, would you have room on your team for somebody who really just wanted to do maybe one show a month or, you know, just announce a difference in family and really just kind of be a brain ambassador? She used our words. And I was like, Landon, absolutely. We call them our style insiders. And literally, if you do X, Y, Z in 60 days or you do X, Y, Z over a quarter, you're going to earn some free products, some mad money, and it's going to pay for your habits. And you know what, guys, I want people like that because you never know when that person is going to like say, you know what, this is kind of fun. And I have friends asking to have trunk shows now. So I think just that taking that prejudge out and realizing that there is strength in numbers and the more that you put out in the universe, the more that's going to come back. And the last thing I'll say, and I'll shut up, is the best thing about this business is sponsoring. It may be the scariest and the hardest, but it is the absolute best thing about this business. Because if, you know, somebody hadn't sponsored Sarah and Sarah hadn't sponsored Callie, then Callie and I literally wouldn't know each other. Possibly, because it's a small world in Texas. So but you sad. never know. That's and it's, it's, it's so true. And it's so true. And even like you think about Liz, like Liz is in California. And if she hadn't reached out to Mandy, to say, I want to be a stylist, and then yeah, and then I've gotten to know her over the years and watched her grow and things like that. It's just, it's really awesome. And that is probably literally, as I said, at Hoopla, and I will say any day of the week, it is the most rewarding part of this business. And it's what makes me stay around and makes me keep booking trunk shows and leading by example and having a strong business is because of all of you, right? And all of those that are to come, whether it's personally sponsored by me or by Callie or by Chen or Kristen or Jenny or, or Fred or Sam or whoever, that's the best part of this business, hands down. So stretch yourself. You can do anything for a week, right? I love the challenge. Hostesses are low hanging fruit. You know why? Because they already love it. And the last thing, I know I had one last, one more last one, oh, um, is, is that, you know, the way I always position my conversation to anybody is it's cheaper than a trip to Costco. <laughs> I can't go to Costco and spend less than $1.99. So this is the time to do it. Kids are back in school. You guys are going to see that booking is going to get easier. Selling is going to get easier. And sponsoring is going to get easier because people feel settled. And summer's over. Fall is here. We all love our boots and scarves and you know, darker clothes and, and pants and all of that. But people also are looking for like their next play, right? Like, okay, I love my job. My kids are back in school, but I need something else for myself. Or I just had my last one in her kindergarten or whatever their story is, it's going to happen. And I think the biggest thing is, is positioning it as something very simple and saying like, you have nothing to lose. You can do anything for 60 days. And I know I talked about this on the first week call, but using that top track, I think it makes it so much more duplicatable because what Landon said to me of like, I can't be you was like, oh, girl, you don't have to be me. And nor do I want you. I want you to be you and what this business can be for your life. So just really put that hat on. And we've talked about it, about like going in with that conversation and be intentional. Um, but hopefully, hopefully that's helpful. And I'm happy to answer any questions right side with Callie. I know sponsoring is always that one that's kind of the thorn in your side, but once you do it, and you, like Callie said, it's riding a bike, right? Like you get one in and that conversation gets better and better and better, but always lead with it. Always lead with the sponsoring conversation because the worst thing you're going to end up with is a trick show. And that's not a bad thing by any means. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Kelly. Do you guys have any, some of y'all are unmuted. Does anyone have any questions? We have about nine minutes left. So I want to hear any questions that you have. Comments? Do you have a second? Yes. Yes, okay. yes, yes. So um, approaching past hostesses, um, I like that your show newer hostess was not good. So how, um, what's a way to approach your hostess about becoming a stylist, even though their show was crap? what, you know, to show them, I don't know, what's the way to convince them that this is not, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but, um, 
what's a way to approach them, even though they've seen that their show wasn't that great? Kelly, you want to answer or do you want me to? Um, you go and then I'll add because I, I kind of have a thought that you go first. Okay. Um, I, speaking from experience, Sarah didn't really have to convince me. I had a wish list before I came. And um, so I was going to spend probably close to $100 anyways. And um, all she said to me that I, the trunk show was, your friends are so much fun and you had so much fun doing We didn't even address the amount of my trunk show. Mm -hmm. um, and I may have asked her, well, my trunk show was bad. What do you think? I don't even know that I did though. And she just said, your friends are so fun. Um, you had such a great time tonight. Yeah, I really think you should do this. So I, it wasn't even an issue. We didn't even talk about it. I see it now because guess what? I wasn't a stylist. I didn't know how well all of her other trunk shows did. I, I didn't know. I had no idea. So right. I, I didn't yeah, know. That's what I was I didn't say. Know that a, yeah. I didn't know that a $500 trunk show was, was not fa fabulous. I didn't know that she made like $65 off in commission off of me. I didn't know that. Um, and she never said that. So, I mean, listen, I was going to get a couple half off. So that's all I cared about. So now as a stylist, I know that and I, we laugh about it now, but I didn't know that then. And I think that's one of the things you get to put yourself back in that position of being a hostess. You guys were all, most of y'all were all hostesses before you were stylists. And so they don't know what they don't know. Kelly? No, I agree. hundred percent. I think that, I think it's always in, in the mindset too, of how you say it is like, and majority of the time, the reason people have a bad show is timing, right? And we say bad show and it's all relative because they don't know what a bad show is. Right. But I think it's all relative because most of the time is that they did it on Thursday night and half their friends have kids that play sports or it's summertime or whatever the reasoning is. I think you always just say like, I just would love to do this with you. Have you ever thought about doing what I do? And I just kind of like brush it under the rug. Does that make sense? Like where I just don't even, it's the elephant in the room that I never even really talk about. And okay. same thing here does with Callie. So is that helpful? Yes. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Good question though. No one? Are we good? Okay. We're gonna, we have six minutes left, so um, I'm gonna talk a few minutes about um, hostess coaching, and I had this conversation with, and the only reason I'm addressing this is because I literally had four conversations this week with girls on my team that were really frustrated with hostess coaching. So this is separate from sponsoring. So you guys know what the challenge is, right? 10 hostesses, five or five, and then post on the page. Okay, so we're switching gears. Um, I have a lot of, girls that are telling me, you know, my hostess is not um, using the trunk show invitation. She is not wanting to give me emails. Um, we had, we had to cancel because, um, you know, nobody was coming. And um, this seems to be, I feel like, you know, I talked to Kim about it, but Kim didn't know that I had talked to Kristen about it just a couple of days ago. Um, and then I talked to Jenny about it on my team as well and have just had a string of a couple of blah trunk shows. So my first piece of advice is, um, Hey, congratulations. You have some skin in the game. You're like a real stylist now when you go to a trunk show and it bombs because it happens to all of us. So you know you have arrived, so welcome. Um, and so that is just a sign. It's just like collecting to know it's going to happen sometimes. But I do think that there are some things that you can um, put into practice and that can kind of prevent that. And Kristen and I talked this week. It really is about just making minor tweaks to some of the things that you are doing in your hostess coaching. And I told Kristen this week, listen, you are the boss of your business. We talk about this all the time. I take out my family calendar. I pick the dates that I could do trunk shows. Those dates don't change unless my husband's travel schedule changes or, or dance or gymnastics change. Okay. Those don't change. Those are my dates. If those dates don't work in um, August, then we're going to move them to September. I'm going to offer September dates because that's when I have determined that my business hours are happening. Okay. Same thing should happen when you book a trunk show. When you book a trunk show, this is what you say. You don't, I don't, I don't ask my hostesses, okay, do you want to do texting? Do you want to do email? Do you want to do Facebook? I don't say that. 
what I say, and listen, I know they're all going to want to say Facebook or texting. You know they're going to say that. So I don't lead with that because I know they're going to jump on that. So I say, okay, so I'm going to send you an email today, and I put the trunk, I put the trunk show in as soon as I book it, and I send a little uh, email out, and it's let's get your party started. You guys have maybe seen it floating around. If you need a copy of it, post, post on the page, and I will post it to the page. But it's a late, so I say, okay, I'm going to send you an email and it's going to give you some instructions on how we're going to send out invitations. Sound good? I have to have her email address anyways. And so, so she may get the email and then a couple of days go by and she doesn't send that email out, right? So I call her like, hey, Jenny, it's Callie. Just wanted to make sure you got my email. Yeah, I did. But I don't really want to email people. I don't, I'm not really comfortable giving out their email addresses. We get this all the time, right? Yes, I just want to do texting. I totally get it. But let me tell you. This is how I do my invitations. Um, it's by far the, it's a proven system. And listen, if they're going to shop with me at your trunk show, they're actually going to have to give me their email addresses anyways. It does not sign them up for anything. It is basically like an e -bite system. And this is going to take so much work out of your hands. Then you know what she's going to say. Okay, but I really just, I don't have their email addresses. Hey, no big deal. I'm going to shoot you some words to say, send it in a Facebook message or a text message a group text message, include me in on that. Say, hey girls, I need your email addresses. I wanna send you an invitation. Guess what? None of them are gonna be offended because you wanna send them an invitation. And then when they respond to the text or the Facebook message with their email address, I'll collect, I will collect all of the email addresses. So you actually don't have to do that. Does that sound good? Nine times out of 10, my hostess will say, okay, I can do that. So I send her a little text message with a cute little image maybe that says, hey, shoot me your email address. I want to invite you to a fun little girls night I'm having. And then I collect all the email addresses and input, input them. Um, when you allow your hostess, and there are exceptions, please. I have had several good hostesses that will take control of their invitations. But for the most part, if they're not going to let you, that's what I say. This is how I do it. Um, and I have less than a minute before this is going to cut me off. But um, that's my biggest tip. You get to decide how you want to do your invitations. So tell them that. I also send a hostess packet and I touch base every single week with them until the trunk show. The week of the trunk show, I do it several times with text messages. Um, it's going to cut me off. But I hope that helps. That was really fast and furious. But <laughs> I, I run my business a certain way. They can hop on board. Um, but if I know the hostess really well, then I might let them take control of the invitations. But if it's a stranger danger, I do the invitations um, and that's how I just present it. This is how I do it. This is how my business works. Our, this is my policy. I told Kristen the other day, they don't know that it's a Stella and Dot policy. This is how we have to invite people. They don't know that. And I don't use those words, but I am adamant on, I try to get those email addresses because I want to be able to contact people even after the show that did not come. Otherwise I have no way to contact people at all and help her with outside orders. It really is for her benefit. Okay, you guys, this is about to hang up. I have no idea if that was, that was like really fast because I'm talking really fast. It's going to hang up on me. Ah, the stress. But I love you guys. I love seeing your beautiful faces. Um, please, please, please share this week. I'll be giving away this necklace and I'll post the playback. Bye. Bye, girls.